I've got like now two studio lights in here so it makes me feel very like not vain but the opposite of vain like there's so much attention on me <laughs> sort of thing so I'm just gonna sit my sit here and just drink my cup of tea and pretend that I don't feel like I'm having a photo shoot instead of the video recording. Welcome back to my channel and before I get um, get a kickstart with this video's content I just want to credit the music in this video to my friend M Harding Harling sorry if I pronounced her name wrong um, but just she's my good friend and she does these sorts um, little um, good music so go, uh, I should have a link to her SoundCloud I think it's called um, down in the description so go and check out her music so yeah, with that done, let's get into this lovely video that I have planned today. And uh, from the title, you can probably know that it says seven writer pro writer's problems. And this is sort of like a little fun thing for me to do. So it, and also I can give tips to you guys to help conquer or somehow manage these little problems or habits that writers do have. So with that in mind, let's jump to number seven and that is self-belief and I um, resonate with this with this so much because I when I started writing my novel I had really bad self-belief that I could actually write it uh, because the so story in my head that I had was so authentic I think that's the word <laughs> authentic and very raw and real I didn't know if I had the absolute quality ability to write it so and I so I put off writing it for a really long time even though it was like boggling around in my head but um when my when I told my friend uh, my close friend about it um it was last summer and she was staying around for a while um she was just like to me Rose it sounds like an amazing idea you should write it and even though I'm only on really on chapter four or five right now um I'm so glad that she gave me that little bit of self-belief that I could do it and I'm not letting go of the story anytime soon. And my tips for you guys um, who are experiencing low self-belief in it, well I don't have many tips in regards to it because we're all kind of different for what gives us self-belief but I would remind you that like JK Rowling had like 19 I don't know she had many like rejection letters in the past so you know Remind yourself that because J.K. Rowling is now like a gazillionaire, billionaire, one of the richest women in the world because of her Harry Potter series and she had a lot of rejection letters before so she can do it, you can. <laughs> With that inspiring message, let's go to number six and trying the number six problem is trying to avoid cliches within your novel or within any writing that you have and this one I think is both an annoyance and something you can't can't truly avoid because in any which way in writing or in life it, this is kind of like a life tip in, in, in some sense you can't really avoid cliches because in some way or another it does come off like a cliche but I feel like sometimes writers can add their own sort of um, originality to it so it's both like a cliche and originality because um, I have this, I have the sort of problem with that at the moment with my novel as a friend, another friend of mine pointed out to me um, the, uh, one of the chapters where the character cheats on my main character um, and she catches him in the act. Um, it's a bit of a cliche and while she gave me tips to try and um, make it less uh, more dramatic or give it more originality um, and I will go into it when I go through my drafts and everything I might try and change it up a little bit. Um, I don't think we can ever really tr truly avoid a cliche like that because it just it gets the ball rolling a little bit and it gets you to know the 
main character a little bit so yeah in my opinion you can't really avoid cliches but I feel like you could put your own spin on it so that's my writer's problem number six to you guys so with that with that done uh, let's go to number five and number five is editing the work uh, this is such a big problem for me I don't know about other writers but um, <laughs> It has really um, been a bit of a problem for me, especially with my previous university year and, um, oh god, <laughs> um, with my previous university year because I'm, I did like a producing class last year and it's made me very more, <laughs> it made my, a bit my, I wouldn't say it's OCD but <laughs> it's made me more like, <laughs> Uh, more punctual, punctual and grammar aware and like spelling aware as well and I was that before but it's just gotten worse well not worse but it's heightened a little bit more after my previous year at university and it's it's sort of strange in a way as well because I'm also just um, have like severe dyslexia so it's sort of really like <laughs> like clashes with each other a lot so and I always have this constant need like to always want to know how to spell a certain word out if I can't spell it out that, in that moment and I won't be able to con continue writing if I spell it until I saw it out and that's something that I need to really overcome I think because I feel like I would get much more further if I didn't always stop to re-edit something or spell a word or something like that because there are going to be like so many drafts well not so many but there could be so I can you can always go back and change it because um, I'll probably be on this novel for another year or so and during the next draft of it I can always go back and find out the actual word and edit it properly so that's so if you guys struggle with that as well like me like not being able to go back right away just know that you're not alone and I don't really have any tips for you on this one because I am struggling with it on my own right now so um, but that is one of the problems that we face and we are trying to conquer it <laughs> um, so um, with that non-conquering tip non-tip thing let's go to number four and number four is research to distraction distraction research to distraction sorry and um, the reason this one is um, number four is because I think somewhat all um, writers can relate relate to this because um, whenever I have to do research for a specific scene like if it's a fight scene I want to know the specific uh, fighting moves <laughs> that wasn't really a fighting move uh, um, uh, or if there's like a certain like let's say if there's like a surgery that's taken place it's, I don't write surgeries but uh, let's say for your novel there's you're having like a doctor and he's taking like surgery or something and you have to sp explain all the methods of the surgery and everything you have to do your research on it and while it's good to do research uh, uh, it's good to do research when you're not writing but in the midst of writing you just want to know a certain word or something or like how to describe a certain weapon um, whatever uh, you quickly do a bit of research and <laughs> it sort of leads you on the path of dis distraction because the next thing you know I'm on YouTube looking up um, I don't know uh, va uh, vampire diaries scenes or uh, moments or the shadow hunters scenes moments or whatever so um, that is a real big thing for me because one minute I'm in the midst of writing I just gotta look up this one thing and the next thing you know I'm looking up bumblebees or um <laughs> I don't know why I said bumblebees but you know that's a real thing apparent apparently I'm looking up bumblebees um <laughs> so uh I think that's um I think this sort of ties in with the editing work where I don't really have any much tips but apart from just if you can't describe it right away just leave it for your editing drafts and then just carry on but I have a hard time conquering that at the moment so I wish you the best of luck to do try and conquer that too so uh, let's go to number three and that is an over overdrive of ideas and uh, I don't know what 
um, you guys stand on this, but I pretty much, with my like inspiration and motivation um, things, it's it goes up and down. Um, like I have um, a low bar of inspiration or a high bar of inspiration all at once. So, um, so um, and that makes it hard for me sometimes to write. Especially, and I think what's even harder is when you have an overdrive of, of ideas. While it's good to like have like cert, uh, like lots of ideas going in your head, um, but when you're in the midst of writing like an important emotional scene and you have an overload of ideas of what happened, what can happen next, what can happen to that character next, what can happen to that character afterwards, and you you're then rushing to get through this scene so you can get to the next part. And while it's good to write at a good certain pace so that you can write as much as you can in that in that moment. It's also good to take your time, especially if if it is an important scene. My advice for that is possibly get like your um, your novel notebook thing, whatever. I haven't got one of those yet, but I'm planning to, and just put it on the side of your um, computer desk or whatever you're typing on. And when you do get an overflow of these ideas or a new inspirational idea comes in your head, just jot it down in that notebook so you don't forget it. And it, your brain might calm down a little bit after you've just written it down somewhere so you don't forget. So that's my advice for that one. So in that in mind, let's go to number two. And that is the simple word of life. <laughs> I mean, I haven't written so much in the last year of when I started writing this novel because I've had university, I've had um, I've had so much going on in the last year that when I do get possibly a chance to write I am just so exhausted all I want to do is sleep <laughs> or nap or just lay in my bed and watch TV and not really think about anything because <laughs> um, and you know even though it's really bad to do that for me, um, if you know how long my days are sometimes, you can understand that I could be, that I'll be dead afterwards. <laughs> um, so I'll just be like, uh, why? <laughs> so, um, and my advice for that is, don't, like, don't feel guilty about it because one of the problems I had last year is that I wasn't getting any writing for my novel in and I felt really bad and I felt like I was such um, a lazy ass basically and you're not, you're not a lazy ass, you just have a lot going on and I wasn't a lazy ass, I was doing like 10,000 things all at once and my brain was doing a billion things at once so it's understandable that writing my novel wasn't on the first uh, top five priorities for me so and I, I did get a chance to write a few times within that year when I started uni again but it was my second year and I was trying to get the best grades I could as possible so it's and I told myself try not to feel bad about it because this degree that I'm doing is going towards my future so yeah, so try not to feel bad about it if you can't get in tons of writing at first or if you don't get a break for a while to do writing because life does that sometimes and life does reward you back that time, I believe. So with that done, let's get to our top one and that is, well, it's a combination of two which I feel like influence each other <laughs> And that is writer's block and lack of inspiration. And I feel like a lot of writers can understand this where you have writer's block, um, but uh, like you either have a lot of inspiration, but you have writer's block on how to write it, or you have lack of inspiration, but you want to write, or it could be the combination of both. You have lack of inspiration and you can't find the words to try and influence that inspiration. So you're I believe my only advice for that is to um, take a walk, one of them would be my advice, take a walk out in like a park or something um, and just get some fresh air and let your mind just, you know, have its little wander in the um, fresh air 
And um, another tip I got is pretty much maybe read some books or read some fan fiction or something just to get your um, creativity spark um, going and um, something just to push that inspiration bubble up. Did I say inspiration bubble up? <laughs> That's going to be my thing now. Inspiration bubble up. <laughs> So um, yeah, that's pretty much my t top seven writing problems for writers. Um, and if you're wondering why I didn't do a top 10, well, I feel like that is a cliche. So I did a seven. <laughs> um, and I like, I, I love the number seven. So that's my lucky number. So yeah, um, that is the end of this video today. But let me know what you think and give me some advice for future videos and um, maybe some um, I video ideas for the future as well if you want and uh, let me know if you have any idea um, writing problems um, that you have um, that wasn't mentioned in this video um, let me down uh, let me know down below and I might mention it um, in my writing journal diaries things in the future uh, I've forgotten what I named it but <laughs> it's it's there in my head somewhere I know it is but um, everyone, I hope to see you again soon and have a lovely day and a lovely summer. So see you next time.